All right, today I'm gonna be reviewing a uh, Bluetooth adapter that I've purchased for my uh, desktop. It's a Bluetooth 4.0 adapter, as well as a new mouse. This mouse here is a uh, Logitech mouse. Both of them I uh, purchased, and I'm going to be doing a trial by fire to see if they work without having to download any software. Alright? All that today on Touch That TV. Bluetooth adapter. I've already plugged it into my Ubuntu GNOME desktop and I'm um, gonna show you guys here that it is plugged in. Uh, once you plug it in then you will see the uh, activity on your screen there with the uh, Bluetooth being available. If it's not plugged in you won't see it on this uh, little panel at all. So and plus you can turn it on and off from here which is a neat feature and then you could go into your settings here and automatically it will begin a search for any active Bluetooth um, devices like um, headsets, you could even connect your phone, I don't know why you would do that, but um, any 4.0, Bluetooth 4.0 device as well as 3.0 because it's backwards compatible. Been doing some reading online and some research to find out how versatile this adapter is. Um, I actually have a soundbar that is beneath the TV that you can see right there and um, it has a pretty good sound it was um, manufactured by a company called Klipsch but they actually have a uh, subsidiary or a, a lower tier version of their products that's called energy um, the sound quality that comes out of this soundbar is pretty good. Um, it's not going to shine through on the video, but I just want to do the, the pairing to the headset just to prove that it actually works. And once it's connected, I'm going to crank up the volume and um, see how it goes. Once again, this is a trial by fire. Not done before. No software installed. I didn't go to any, um, what you call it, um, uh, like the Synaptic Package Manager or go on a browser and look for something and then install it. This is like with the kernel drivers that are pre-installed in the kernel. So this is what you get when you purchase devices that are compatible with Linux. But anyway, proceeding. Go ahead and start the setup. Wow, that was quick. It connected to my soundbar. I don't know how to hide the volume is. Let me turn it up. And while the volume is up, let me see. Uh, do I have any music or anything on my computer that I could play without getting taken down? <sighs> okay. I actually have some CDs that I purchased and I ripped um, several months ago. I don't like to have an enormous library of music on my computers. Um, I don't know, it's just a hassle having to transfer all these files back and forth. But anyway, I'm just gonna play a small portion of one of these songs and um, just to prove that it actually works. So this is not coming from my headset. It's coming from the sound bar behind me. Oh. I take that back, guys. I had to take the headsets off because it's playing through the headsets. I got to switch it to the sound bar. Sorry. And it was loud as heck. 
But anyway, that's as much of the song as I'm gonna play. Only 28 seconds of the song was played. Okay? And um, if anybody is curious about the artist, um, it's a reggae artist called Barris Hammond. And he actually has a, uh, a double disc set that you could purchase. This is off of disc two. The sound song is called uh, Three Two One. I could, I could beat myself. It's there. <laughs> All right. So that's that for the uh, soundbar. I apologize if it came through a little bit too loud on your end. And if it sounded like crap, YouTube, sorry. But um, as far as on my end, it's pretty good. So let me make sure that my audio is okay. Just, let me see if I'm playing back in my headset. Okay. I'm good. So that's that. Works. Ah! And I actually have some Bluetooth headsets that I'm gonna purchase. And um, they're a cheap pair of headsets that I saw on Newegg right here. Only 38 bucks. So I love the color blue, it's my favorite color. And these headsets look awesome to me. And from looking at the um, specifications on these headsets right here, they will correspond real well with the 4.0 um, adapter that I have here and these uh, profiles that you see here if these profiles don't match the profiles on whatever adapter that you have they're, they're least likely to work which all four of the well actually I digress profile HFP does not correspond with my adapter but the other three do. So I'll be taking a chance um, purchasing these headsets. And once I do get them, I'll connect them on, on, on YouTube and, you know, so that you guys can see that it actually connected. But here we go. These are all the profiles that the headset itself will connect to. I mean, the uh, adapter will connect to. And the headsets actually have a lot of these profiles that should work and also inclusive with this Bluetooth headset is um, noise cancelling and um, multi-connection function so I could have it connected to my phone my desktop and uh, whatever other mobile device even my car so yeah that's that's pretty good right there what's kind of Impressing about these headsets, which is one of the reasons why impressive I'm not impressing but impressive about these headsets is the fact that they say that you could talk up to 45 hours I'm not gonna sit and talk to somebody that long, but that is impressive the average Bluetooth headset even the $300 headsets from Bose and from uh, Beats by Dre or Beats by Apple actually have a 10 to 15 hour talk time so these surpasses that by three and a half times so i mean do you actually have to pay 300 dollars for a bluetooth headset no do i no do you maybe because people think that because the price is better that the sound is better which is not always the truth anyway off on a tangent back to the store so that's that and up next we have the Logitech mouse now this has an interesting feature this adapter here any Logitech device that you have purchased that's wireless and it has that orange what do I call that asterisk on it if it has this on the adapter itself, that means that you could pair multiple devices to this one adapter. I already have one of these adapters plugged in because I have my my K400, my K4 series 
um, keyboard connected to my desktop currently. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to pair the mouse to this adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the software right here. Here's the software. This is the Solar software that you could download. I'm actually gonna put this software program in the description below. I said earlier in the video that I didn't have to install any software. Um, the Solar program is specifically for that USB adapter and the features that are behind that Logitech feature. But it's not absolutely necessary if you don't have multiple devices that have that function. So if you have purchased a keyboard or a mouse that has that asterisk on it and you have just one of each, you could just plug it in and it'll start to work without having to install the solar solar um, driver program here. So once you install this, just just some um, uh, complements that driver that's already pre-installed. So anyway, I'm gonna put this in the description below so those who are actually interested in installing the solar program on their device they could go ahead and do that anyway so i am going to go ahead and i read the instructions in the book it says to turn the device on first and um the mouse is actually on so in order to actually add a new device to this you have to go up to where it says um, unifying receiver and then pair new device right now it's searching for the mouse you have to turn it off and back on all right there we go I had to turn the mouse off and then turn it back on immediately in order for, that's kind of weird, in order for the um, software to pick it up. But as you can see here, I have some success, but there's a problem. Now I'm going to actually use the mouse to control the cursor to see what happens, to see if the mouse cursor would actually move, and it does. But the one problem that we have here is that the wireless link is not encrypted so what that means is that for whatever reason that you might be concerned about your wireless device being hacked um, because of a lack of encryption on the, the data or the, uh, the stream between the wireless device itself and your computer um, this may be a concern to you but I would say don't be concerned about it at all and here's why Okay, I'm gonna close that. Now, the mouse is connected and it's not encrypted, but the keyboard is. So you can see right here, the keyboard has an encryption and that encryption is sharing the same signal with the mouse device. So there's no need to have a secondary encryption because that will slow down the stream of data between the communications between the adapter itself and the peripheral. So too many encryptions will actually hark late latency. So understanding that is why I'm telling you don't be concerned. And furthermore, I don't know how long it's been since I've done my last video on the actual keyboard, the K400 keyboard. But since then, I've had the same set of batteries in there, and it's still showing me that it's reading at 90% battery life. I don't know if it's a flaw in the software, but that's incredible that it's sustaining the batteries for that long. And the reason why I purchased the mouse over here is because it has the same capability of sustaining the battery for a long duration so the mouse could be sustained for upwards of 14 months depending on usage 
as well as the keyboard 14 month duration so you buy you buy batteries once every year plus now I say that again you buy new batteries once every year plus and I'm gonna say this to add to that what's the sense in buying new batteries all the time Walmart you could buy some Reovac batteries that are rechargeable along with the charger for like 14 15 bucks and you get two double A's and two triple A's which corresponds with the key and the mouse the keyboard and the mouse one uses double A one uses triple A so you have rechargeable batteries for both of them recharge them instead of buying buying batteries over and over and over and over so anyway that's a little nugget for you guys to take with you and as you can see both devices connected flawlessly now those might sit down and you know complain and whine and say oh this this encryption uh, non encryption on the mouse is a flaw shut up it's not a flaw it's just minimizing latency but not encrypting every device connected to the one adapter the more encryptions that you have in security the slower your 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 network would be that's any anybody who's familiar with um, networking the same concept shines through here so anyway I hope you guys um, enjoy that little tidbit right there and um, please subscribe and uh, have some videos later on with some other things that I'm looking at purchasing as well as a discussion about something I've read several weeks back and um, I'm gonna talk about that as a matter of fact I'm gonna make another video immediately after this one so you guys stay tuned anyway subscribe thank you for watching and have a good one this is Eric from Tux Tech TV signing out. Peace.